This week in the Electric Samba Project, we take a behind-the-camera look at making the show every week. Harder. This week, things are looking up around here as we successfully reach two milestones. First, we pass the 1000 subscriber mark on our YouTube channel, and second, our battery module 50 mile test drive was a total success. I want to thank all our subscribers. Your likes, shares, and comments is what keeps us going around here. Making this YouTube series has been as rewarding as building the e-samba itself. But as I'm quickly finding out, it's turning out to be more work than building the actual car. I want to share with you what is involved into making a weekly 10 minute episode. So apart from having a day job at Jack 35, I spend time every week doing research tracking and purchasing components for the experiments that I do on camera. I then have to set time aside for the actual play with the high voltage stuff. Of course, not before setting cameras on tripods and timers for time lapses and sometimes lights, microphones and all that stuff that goes along with shooting video. Once done playing with the EV stuff, I then have to collect all the footage the soundtracks and the pictures and import them into my computer. Video tracks have to be synchronized with audio tracks and pictures have to be turned into time lapses, which a lot of the time turns into a time consuming process. All this stuff ends up in a timeline in Final Cut Pro, the editing application I use on my Mac. At this point, the stuff on that timeline is usually about 30 to 40 minutes of uncut, unedited footage of me endlessly attempting to complete semi-fluent sentences in front of the camera, or me endlessly rambling on and on about unrelated stuff. So the process of cutting all that stuff down to a watchable 10 minute segment begins. More often than not, it's only at this point that I realize that most of the stuff I said on camera is not really relevant to the story and the stuff I really needed to say didn't make it to tape. So the only way to fix this is to either reshoot myself in front of the camera or record what is commonly known as a voiceover narration. This is turning out to be one of my favorite methods as I am not particularly good and fluent in front of the camera, but I can easily write my thoughts and narrate them on top of video. So once I rewrite the entire episode into one coherent 10 minute segment, I record myself narrating this story and try to place all the available video footage in the corresponding place. If I need further footage, first I look for something in my vast collection of stock footage I've shot over the last 10 years. If nothing suitable is found, I then go and try to shoot what I need to finish the episode. All in all, the shooting, writing, processing, editing, and narrating is way more work than playing with high voltage stuff, but it's equally challenging and rewarding to me. So that's why I've taken up the challenge to not only convert an old classic car into the e-samba, but to essentially also produce a video series about it. A series that once finished will easily be converted into a two hour feature film about the whole process of converting a vehicle and being part of the whole DIY EV movement. Currently, I am doing all of this on my own. I do the best I can. But of course, the aim is to progressively keep getting better at my craft, whether it be working on and designing an electric car or telling the story of said EV. Jack35 has been, up to this point, my main sponsor in this project. It provided funds to purchase a donor vehicle, the EV components, and it's currently providing all the camera, sound, grip, and lighting equipment that I use. In all, Jack35 has invested somewhere around $50,000 so far. My brother Gavril, which many of you met at FCON this year, also helps out frequently, so I have him down as a sponsor also. 
Misa, another brother, will be helping out shooting, editing, and marketing the Isama project. So we will also go down as a sponsor. As of last week, both evwest.com and evtv.me have come on board as sponsors. And finally, there's also a local VW racing company that has reached out to us interested in sponsoring our project. I want to take the opportunity to thank each and every single one of you who has helped me up to this point. For viewers, if you feel compelled to help me further this project, you can easily do so in any of the following ways. You can like, comment, and share my videos. You can click on the ads served by Google on my videos. You can support any of the sponsors by using their services or buying from their web stores. And finally, you can become our sponsor. So now that I've gotten all of this out of the way, let's take a look at how my battery module test went down this weekend. This weekend was the winter Octomeet in Long Beach, California. Since my Samba only has a 50 to 60 mile range, it means I had to tow it one way. So not having any windows in it, I decided to tow it there and then drive it back. The show was as fun as always, with hundreds of BW buses showing up. These meets are the best place to find those super hard to find Samba parts one sometimes needs. Anything from $3,500 seats to hold the Lux roof clips. You know, just in case you're crazy enough to convert a non-deluxe bus into a 23 window Samba. Once again, the electric Samba was the topic of conversation all day and I even had a chance to take a few people on a ride around the parking lot. I managed to burn off a whole 20 amp hours of my battery, just joyriding. So the Samba had to make the 50 mile trip back home on 160 amp hour. That meant that I had to average 384 watts per mile. All right, guys. So uh, this is a good show here at uh, Octo's out here in Long Beach. We had fun. We talked to a lot of people and stuff, and um, I got to show my my battery module here. And then at the end, I even got to a chance to take a, a bunch of people out to just kind of drive around this parking lot and stuff. Um, that was cool. You know, a lot of people were like, "Well, you know, I want to make one of these one day. I'm gonna." Make you know, it was like 10 people told me they're gonna convert a car, you know. Um, I don't know, you know, how many of those really meant it or, but you know, there's small percent, that's how it starts, you know. Um, so anyways, now we're gonna try to get home. Um, and I'm gonna keep my module connected right now and um, we're just gonna see if, it, if we make it. Um, the challenge here is that we don't have enough people to ride with me uh, so everybody that's here has a vehicle um, and I'm gonna have to be riding on my bus by myself and so no one is gonna be tough to keep an eye on the module to see what it's doing I can put a camera and kind of record the you know the temperature and record the voltage and stuff but without someone really kind of relaying that information to me uh, while I'm driving, it's gonna be kind of do or die, you know, it's like if I see fire, that's, I mean, it's gonna be like maybe we'll plan to, to you know, stop here and there just kind of to check on it and stuff, but um, you know, I like to live dangerously, so I think that's how we're gonna do it, we're just gonna get on the road and then see what happens kind of thing um, it feels pretty good, it doesn't it doesn't feel any different with this module on the system as, uh, as it does without it. So um, I still haven't been able to sense any heat whatsoever on either the cells or on the contacts on the, uh, on the actual um, connections. So I'm pretty confident that it's, it's going to be uneventful that we're going to be able to make it home. No problems. Um, I don't know. Am I overconfident? Maybe, but you know, uh, that's what will keep me from doing stuff like this and and just proving 
that some of the theory of some people might not be based on the actual fact. Um, so uh, let's go. Let's see how we do. My battery is 28.1 degrees Celsius. Alright, so here I am pulling into my house after a 50 mile trip back home and um, I am with zero Oh, it just turned into 179 but it was exactly at zero amp hours um, I still have more juice in my battery because uh, the voltage is at 100. It's resting at 108 or whatever. So, um, not bad. This thing averaged 254. I don't know how accurate that is, but um, we made it. We made it. And, yep. Our module over there, 18650. Let's go check it out. Uh, 22.9 degrees Celsius. So, not bad. Oh man, not bad at all. It's kind of cold outside, but this thing, it's not even warm. It's a 3.7, 3.79 voltage. So this this thing still has some juice on it. 180 amp hours out of it uh, It should still have uh, 120 amp hours in there while the rest of my pack is pretty much almost gone So We made it once home. I removed the module to bleed the rest of the energy in it Using the power lab 6 so I could keep track of how many amp hours it had left But the next morning the power light gave me this reading does anyone know what that means? So I gave up trying to figure it out and I just recharged the module. It took in 330 amp hour, so the capacity is somewhere between 300 and 330. So all in all, I'd say this was a very successful test. It proves that in this particular application, I shouldn't need much thermal control on these modules. It seems pushing 300 pounds around using an AC50 motor just simply does not draw enough energy out of 150 parallel cells to cause overheating problems. Not even on cells that are near the end of their life. So I guess I should start building another 29 modules. So thank you for watching this video. Uh, make sure to catch next week's episode for more electric samba adventures. But next week Bye. We almost lost our wheel right here. Folks, if you enjoy my videos, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and join the conversation down below by leaving a comment. Uh, if you don't, then also leave me a comment so I can make these videos better. Thank you.